Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go through Twitter, see what people are sharing on social media. I'll interject my financial opinions as I go through it. Uh, it's generally related to three different topics, wealth building, commodities, and that I share my opinions on. So let's just dive right in, take a look, and see what people are sharing. If you wanna follow me, finding underscore finance, uh, and if you wanna join our community, finding value.com, where I dive deeper into potential investment opportunities off of the information that I gain from the markets from technical analysis, uh, the cycles that I watch, yield curve, inversions, and uninversions, and all of those things. Uh, I do teach uh, in some of these sessions. I do share my experiences and uh, show you guys the things that I've learned over the years if you're interested in learning about the markets. Uh, Mayday coupon code is still active. We have midweek updates that are released on Wednesdays, <clears throat> and we have uh, weekend question and answer sessions that I will answer whatever questions you guys have. Uh, so that's what we've got going on there. Uh, High Heat says, Mr. Slammy laying the foundation for greatest oil rally of all time. I see $250 oil coming or a global depression, maybe both. So how can that happen? What is going on here? Um, I see a lot higher oil. Um, I don't know if it's going to come in the short term, but towards the end of the 2020s, when we get through this patch of negative, pessimistic sentiment uh, against oil, I think there is something behind it. Uh, I think that we could easily see uh, a lot of inflation. And oil is the most inflation-sensitive asset. So inflation comes from two areas, uh, fiscal spending and monetary bank lending. When that comes into the system, that credit, it puts oil, which is the number one commodity uh, used in the economy. It's the number one commodity in the economy. Oh, hopefully I said that right. Um, since it's the number one commodity and has the most uses, that inflation puts everything into a shortage, a credit that comes into the system. It's a shortage, and that shortage is seen in oil because it's used in the most products. So if we continually have a high rate of inflation, it will continue to put oil into a shortage where you have to spur uh, the supply to increase. If the supply isn't there, then the price of oil goes up. So the demand for oil uh, is not just demographic-based uh, and population-based, so to speak, of the world. Uh, it's also the expansion of the credit supply that a lot of people don't think about. And that is where the demand for oil could, could come from. It's that inflationary uh, movement. Uh, Warren Pine Purchase applications rose back to levels last seen in January, February. As expected, lower rates are working into the house. And here's the data coming back up. And what we have here is mortgage rates, the percent on the bottom, and these are the applications index on the left. So what we should see is the index should slowly work its way upward if we continue to get lower rates. Uh, but we have seen recently the 10-year yield going up. Well, I thought they were cutting rates. You are correct, but the rates they are cutting are on the short end. They're not on the long end. And the, and the, the markets might call their bluff of why they are lowering interest rates. They're obviously going to say, well, the unemployment rate is going up. Um, maybe it's because of a fiscal debt problem. And if it's because of a fiscal debt problem, people are going to run away from the long end of the curve. So we'll see what occurs there. We'll see. Uh, here's another one from Kevin. It says, silver will blow through $50 an ounce, and then the real excitement begins. It's bigger than Trump versus Harris. It's, it's bigger than the Japanese carry trade. It's more relevant than pop culture drama about Diddy. The loss of value of all money versus gold and silver will have a profound effect on everyone's lives. It's the number one story that should be understood if you want to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement wealth. 
So he thinks, you know, we, we could cut through 50 like a samurai sword through hot butter. Heck yeah, hot, hot samurai sword, baby. Uh, so we can see a big move over in silver, in his opinion. This is the big cup and handle, guys. This is this is like orgasmic to chartists. Uh, this is ectoplasm, uh, South Park style, when we look at this and these charts, if you're a chartist. Um, what it means is that the herd is the herd is lining something up massively here. Uh, and, and it's over a, a period from the 1970s. <laughs> like, this is the biggest pattern ever. Um, and people don't even know what's coming. I feel so sorry and so bad for a lot of people. Uh, what's, what could occur here is a very big move in silver. Uh, once it cuts through all of these resistance levels, uh, again, a, a hot samurai sword through butter, uh, that's going to wake up a lot of people. And then you're going to get the FOMO people. Uh, you know, all the crypto people are probably going to run over here because all they care about is price movements and, and getting rich and buying Lambos. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I understand, you know, making money is awesome. Don't get me wrong, but uh, they're just going to chase wherever the price goes up. Uh, this is like the ultimate. I'll say it's like the ultimate setup with the ultimate technical chart pattern uh, occurring right now. We've got a debt problem. They're lowering interest rates. The yield curves are inverting. It's like everything's in alignment for silver to do some sort of big blast off. Uh, I don't know if that triggers other things. Because when we break this, guys, you're triggering the big pattern. And the big pattern has projections of, of silver up in the multi hundred dollar range. And if we get to multi hundred dollars, I don't know what that necessarily means for an impact. A lot of these banks are short massive amounts of silver uh, in terms of their contracts. I don't know what that means for the banks. Do the banks go belly up? Um, they're also massively short on platinum, and platinum looks good too. Um, I highly doubt that silver is going to go to a few hundred dollars an ounce and platinum go nowhere. So, so the three most heavily shorted metals in the market uh, by these big banks is silver, platinum, and gold. Palladium is also up there too. But if these all start to run massively, I don't know what kind of impact that has on the banks. Like, I don't know if that has a, like, a problem where they could go bankrupt. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. I, I'm watching it. and. Uh, a silver believer. Uh, David Lee. So this is from Michael Oliver talking about silver as well. Uh, it's a bold forecast. Precious metals can go vertical. The next five weeks potential target. This is five weeks, guys. Silver is 55 and gold is 3,000 to 3,200. Uh, is that is, is what Michael is stating. And you know what? When I look at this chart, and obviously we've broken out, did a little read, you know, kind of move back. It very well could do that. It very well could. And if you're positioned in some of these like junior companies, um, one of my junior companies, I, it was up like 20% a few, you know, a few weeks ago. It was, it's been up like 5%, 5%, 10%. And today it was up another like 14 or 15%. I'm like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm well over a hundred percent now. I'd have to see actually where it ended today. I didn't really look at it towards the end of the day, but uh, this is crazy. And if this if this goes, you know, if this continues to go up, it's a gold company. Uh, and if gold continues to go to, you know, $3,000, $3,200, these gold and silver mining stocks could do some crazy things. Uh, absolutely crazy things. And, you know, there are some that are still down. Um, and we don't know fully how high these, you know, gold and silver can go. Um, obviously, it could pause. We could get a pullback at these levels when it does hit it. But uh, the... Earnings dynamics of the producers would rapidly change here because oil is still cheap. We are at a gold to oil ratio of, I don't even know what it is. I didn't look today. It's probably around 39 or something like that because gold was up a little bit and oil was down 2.5%. It's probably around almost 39.40. Uh, that is an insanely big ratio uh, where oil is incredibly cheap. And the mining companies are going to make a lot of money. They're going to make a lot of money under this, uh, under these conditions. And hopefully these conditions can persist for a little bit uh, and give the companies a little bit of runway to earn some money, uh, stack some earnings, and have their earnings per share grow rapidly. And that's what drives stock price. Uh, coming down, it says OPEC forecasts oil demand to reach more than 120 million barrels per day by in 2050. 
OPEC says oil reinvestment requirements through 2050 total $17.4 trillion. That's a lot of money. So what do you think? You think we're going to continue to have uh, demand go up to 120 million barrels per day? I think so. I definitely think so. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, oil demand is not going to go up. It's the number one commodity, guys. It's used all over the place. Uh, transportation isn't as big of a deal is what most people think. I mean, you could literally drop it by 10% transportation, and it's not as big as what you think uh, in terms of total million barrels per day. It might be a few million barrels per day. Because what, what the problem is, you've got all of these other countries ramping oil use with hybrid vehicles and, and internal combustion engine vehicles rapidly. And they could be they could be running you know mopeds and bikes too. It doesn't have to be cars. So I, I think people don't understand. It's like they they live in their bubble. Uh, they know the first world country maybe is all they know, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to buy an electric vehicle. While two, three, four, five other people are trying to put mopeds uh, on you know riding mopeds where they never consumed oil before that for transportation at all. So they went from zero to something. And it's not like there's not oil in electric vehicles. And it's not like electric vehicles don't burn something else like natural gas or whatever powers the electricity. It's this full circle of, of getting back to fossil fuels almost, in any case you look at. Uh, here's Huey, the miners, unhedged gold stocks broken out. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah, breaking out, baby. Uh, we can see a big move here. The longer and bigger the base, the higher in space. Uh, so we could see a big move in the Huey. We could see a big move in a lot of these small junior companies and, and developers. Uh, and there are some really good opportunities out there. Uh, and again, if, if you're interested in knowing what I think about them, uh, you can obviously sign up to the website and find that out. Uh, Captain Foresight says, next week, U.S. crude oil inventory is expected to fall below the five-year cloud for the first time in years under any semblance of a normal market Oil would be going bananas. Well, why isn't it? What is going on? And this is the EIA report and charts. Crude oil stocks dropped to an April 2022 low. Cushing held steady near seasonal low. What's going on here? Look at crude oil inventories at the bottom here. We've got motor gasoline total inventories below average. We've got distillate fuel total inventories below average. Cushing crude oil is almost out of its five-year uh, cloud. We've got total U.S. refinery demand is high. Crude oil production estimates are flat. What's going on here? How come the price isn't going up? Is this because of the election? Is there some way that they are muting this move higher? I don't know. Uh, it is the macro fundamental um, picture versus the sector fundamental of oil. And we're, 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 going, we're battling back and forth with this. I don't know what's going to win, but... I'm just going to stay long oil and ride through whatever volatility there is. Uh, investment wisdom, Warren Buffett says, human nature has not changed. People will always behave in a manic, depressive way over time. They will offer great values to you. So wait for those manic, depressive times to load up on the stock. That is everything, guys. You have to train yourself to be different than the herd. And the herd will not change. That is, that is the biggest advantage. There's a, there's a couple of big advantages that you can get in, in your investment. I don't know, your investment life or career, however you want to call it. It's to find asymmetry. And when you find asymmetry, it's to buy when people are crapping themselves. To not fall victim to that emotional, uh, the manic depressive way. To not fall victim to your emotions and to do the opposite and just load up. All you need is one big ride for most people, and that will get you where you want to go. One big ride. So use the yield curve, use what you learn, uh, and then jump in when people are crapping themselves, and then just hold on. Hold on for dear life. Hoddle like you can. Oil price is expected to rebound above $80 per barrel as inventories decline, says UBS. Okay, so what's going on here? We had oil prices decline. These guys are saying expected to go up. I've seen other people talk about 
you know, oil prices are going to remain low for 2025 in the $60 range. Here, this is this is what you want to grab from it, guys. They don't know what the heck they're talking about. They don't. The market's going to do whatever the market's going to do. The question that I would ask everyone is, is oil, is oil cheap or expensive? And why is it cheap or expensive? It is definitely cheap. It is way cheap. Okay, so oil is cheap, and I can say that with 100% certainty because the ratio is cheap against gold and the ratio is cheap against other assets going back in history. So that is a fact. That is a given of information that we can use to make a decision. Now, the problem is, in the short term, we have a lot of people who are scared of a recession. They're scared of a slowdown, scared of a recession. The yield curve is uninverting. And rightfully so, that could be the case. We could get a slowdown. So then the question that you want to ask next is, how many people have positioned for that outcome? In my opinion, it's a lot of people have positioned in that outcome. Okay, so everybody's short. They are not in oil. They're scared. So that is when you have to make a decision. We're cheap. They're scared. Do I purchase? And if I do purchase and it goes lower, how is that going to impact my emotions? Should I buy it all in one shot? Maybe I should cost average in over you know, a couple of months. Maybe I should buy it. And if it goes down, I just emotionally control myself and ride through it. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Now, other people will say, oh, well, it's going to go down. It's 100% in the bag. I don't know about that. We cannot make that conclusion that, that a recession is 100% in the bag. A lot of people have been predicting recession ever since 2021, 2022, 2023, every single year. And then we don't know how bad it is. And these guys are printing money like mad. So who's going to win? What's going to win? Sector fundamentals? Is the macro picture going to win? Is the money printing that they are putting out there and the liquidity going up in China and all around the world, is that going to overpower the potential recession fears? It's tough to say. No one knows. And you're, not, you're, not, you're never going to get that answer. You're never going to know what the future is going to hold. But what you can say, we are cheap. We are undervalued. That is a fact. And that is what I go off of. And if, you're, if you can hold long enough, that's where you make the money. You can also look at technical charts and, and estimate where we're at roughly. In my opinion, we are still in a wave two pullback before wave three in oil. And gold is running to the upside. Gold is our leader. Oil follows gold. If gold's running higher like a madman, what do you think oil is going to do in the future? It's going to run up like a madman. When is it going to occur? We don't know the when. Don't know the when. So that is what you have to control. You have to control. We are underpriced. We are cheap. It's undervalued. We can buy it over a period of time, create a strategy, learn that, that gold's a leader, and, and oil will eventually follow. Now, could it, could it get ugly in the next few months? It could. It could. And that's where you have to weigh and balance how you want to approach the markets. Refinery run cut happening, margins bottoming. OPEC plus crude exports remain low. Crude tightness will continue, but draw size will dampen. Product storage will draw, which will push speculative positioning out of shorts. Margins will rise, which pushes throughput higher. Crude is going to go up or rocket in his opinion. Uh, and again, I don't use these opinions for anything. I just read them to you guys and share other people's opinions. Uh, my opinion is I don't know what's going to happen in the very short term. Uh, I think we are going to go up in the medium to longer term. And what does that mean in terms of time frame? Uh, I think that we could be going sideways to lower for maybe six months to a year, uh, maybe six to 18 months, something like that. Uh, and I don't know where if we get an overpowering inflationary surge and, and oil goes up uh, or if we're going to drag lower and, and the recession fears are correct. And unemployment continues to go higher. That very well could be the case. Uh, but in the short term, the possibilities of both of those outcomes exist. And if it's if it moves like general, you know, history in general, uh, we could see a slowdown and oil could go back down to in the 60s or 50s even. That is a possibility. JSC says the latest comparative inventory analysis using EIA data through 925 
It's bullish weekly with total commercial stocks, excluding other oils dropping 13 million barrels uh, week over week. The implied fair value of oil is $83 or $12 undervalued from the current WTI price, nearly a six-month low in, in commercial stocks or inventories. So what this is, is he's pricing these dots. And those dots uh, has a, a price overlaid with it on the left-hand chart. So this is your stock draws, uh, commercial inventories, and this is your price. So when you draw down, it, it brings us below the average. Uh, you drop this way or you can drop down this way, depending on where you're at for total petroleum stocks. Then the dot plot, he overlaid this and says, well, if you're here, you're going to be at about 80 something dollars. So you go straight up to the red line and then you look to your left and that's $83. Uh, so based off history and where the commercial inventories are today, historically, oil has been priced at $83. It is $12 undervalued. So even on commercial inventories, even on a ratio perspective, oil is undervalued. This is when you want to buy it, in my opinion. Uh, and there's the big crude draws that they have in crude, cushing, gasoline, and distillates. Uh, breaking, China's 10-year yield has hit the lowest level ever. Uh, and there's the yield dropping on down, almost like a crescendo or a washout yield sell. Uh, or people running into bonds because yields drop when people buy bonds. So people running into bonds, they're they are running into it. They are scared. Uh, this is what that deflation deleveraging looks like, smells like, feels like. That's what it looks like, feels like, smells like. Uh, U.S. commercial crude storage hit the lowest level in the last five years for this time of year. And this is what it looks like. And there we are at the lowest level. But why is crude oil going down? Good question. Don't know why. No one knows the exact answer. People are selling it. There's more, there's more sellers than buyers. Why is there more sellers than buyers? That's what they make the answer of. Fears of a recession. Uh, maybe something else. I don't know. Maybe they have insider information and a false flag event's coming and it's going to hit oil. I don't know. Uh, we've got Patrick Caramere. He says, if you think you missed the precious metals bull era, do not worry. You have not. Quite the contrary. As the proper bull era for precious metals has not even started yet. So early. The true massive gains are still ahead of us. Enjoy the ride, guys. So here's the 1970s. This is gold versus the SPX. Rippy, rippy, all the way up in the 70s with one pullback uh, all the way up. Then we did a massive, massive consolidation. Uh, very painful for gold holders. Why did it consolidate that much? Uh, we had a lowering interest rate environment this entire time. We also came from a very overvalued state in the 1980s, early 1980s, where gold accounted for everything in the, in the system. Uh, we could go back to a gold-backed currency supply in 1980s. Uh, and it was overvalued, so this was the valuation leaking out of it. In the year 2000, 99, 2000, people became very, uh, the hatred towards gold increased. Uh, and that's when it was incredibly cheap. Uh, this would have been the best time to buy gold is about 99, 2000. And then it rocketed higher during that bull market of 2000 uh, to 2011. And then we went into another corrective phase. Uh, in my opinion, this is a double bottom. It's bottom one and then another bottom here. Uh, and then if we break up here, we could get a big, big, big move here, guys. Uh, we're breaking this downtrend line. If you drew a downtrend line there, we're right there breaking it. We have an excellent opportunity here in gold versus the SPX. Uh, in gold priced in dollars, in gold priced in M2 money supply, gold priced in basically anything. Uh, so it looks really good. Uh, Spencer, whatever his name is, uh, just got quoted with a four handle on a home mortgage, a four. Uh, oh boy, is the economy going to catch fire in 2025 in his opinion. Uh, so it looks like mortgages, at least his, he got quoted with a four point something percent, uh, thirty year fixed rate mortgage is my guess. Jordan Roy says the miners are emerging from a super bullish but obscure pattern, known as a running correction. It is more bullish than a bull flag pattern. It is essentially a correction that ends at or near the same level as it began. Correction have three legs: down, up, down. In a running correction. The up leg is strongest and the market moves to a new high. 
Within that up leg, there are three mini legs. The final leg down takes the market back to where the correction started. GDX and GDXJ formed a clear five waves up in March and April. The running correction has wave two, now wave three has started. So we've got a nice big move potentially in GDX and GDXJ that we've just finished the running correction. The running correction is basically a three hump consolidation, if you guys want to know what that is, and then it breaks to a new high. And it's done that in both. So we have a lot of strength. And the running correction is angled, at least here, upward with higher lows. That is incredibly bullish. Incredibly bullish. Uh, here's Jeff Winnegar. It says, Look at this waterfall of the conference board's leading economic indicators divided by lagging indicators. We have seen eight plunges like this since the 1960s, and each one flagged a recession. So maybe we're in the recession and coming out of it, hopefully soon, because each of these were the low points. And you can see the gray lines are, are where these low points are. So maybe we already went through it. Fingers crossed. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, been saying silver has a great setup for a move to 40 bucks. So the back test to the double blue bullish inverse head and shoulder patterns was already done. And that the breakout above the bullish pink expanding falling wedge was done. And yesterday we got the breakaway move. So the bullish expanding halfway wedge pattern is broken to the upside and we are moving. This could accelerate. And that's where Michael Oliver's saying we could get a big move higher very quickly. Uh, Grady probably thinks the same thing, everything. I think the same thing. I think we could see a big move. Uh, and that's what I've got for today, guys. So we're going to end it there. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website. And we'll catch you guys later. This is Finding Value.